Pastor George from Chetwin, beautiful British Columbia. And uh, I want to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today I want to talk a little bit about discipleship and following Christ. I trust it will bless your heart and even challenge you. I want to read from St. Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 9, verse 57 onward. As they were walking along the road, a man said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus said to another man, Follow me. But the man replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. Well, the big question is, what is discipleship? What is it to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? Discipleship simply means this. In the Christian sense, discipleship is the long process of making someone to become like Jesus Christ in the way that Jesus Christ lived his life and presented himself to people as a hope, as someone you could give them peace and joy and satisfaction. And the process of making someone become like Christ is a process that was really initiated by Jesus Christ himself through his teachings and through the demonstration of his actions. While Peter and John were casting nets into the sea, and Jesus came by one day and he said to them, come, follow me. Now you can imagine Peter and John maybe saying, like, Jesus, you got to be kidding me, man. Like, this is our livelihood. You want us to give up our fishing boats and our nets and our way of living to follow you? Well, yeah, that's exactly what it meant. From, but from that day forward, they began to learn by observation and by listening to the teachings of Jesus what it is to become a disciple. And yet, the call that Jesus made was not made in a vacuum, but it was quickly qualified. Jesus said, if you follow me, I will make you to become fishers of men. Jesus has an intention to use these guys to reach out to other people so that they may share the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you got to understand, it took Jesus three years to teach and to train by demonstration what it is to become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. For instance, the disciples observed Jesus in healing the sick. They observed Jesus in raising the dead, speaking forgiveness. He was a friend of the sinner man. He looked, Jesus did, he looked beyond race and color and culture, and he saw right into the heart of an individual. Jesus loved and forgave those who people felt were unlovable. And so for three years, the disciples are watching, they're observing, they're listening, they're taking it in, and they're being molded to become more and more like Jesus Christ. And so the demonstrations that Jesus had shown 
plus his immaculate teachings would bring anybody into a mode or into a desire to follow Jesus. There was a magnetism about Christ that drew people to him. The call of discipleship is made very clear in the scriptures that I just read, amen. And, and the gentleman comes to Jesus and says, I will follow you wherever you go. And, and every time I look at that and read it, I, I wonder, is, is this just an outburst of emotional energy? I will follow you wherever you go. Did this particular gentleman fully understand the magnitude of such a statement? Because, you see, ladies and gentlemen, one of the places where Jesus was designated to go would be to the cross at Calvary. Did this man understand when he made the statement, I will follow you wherever you go, might involve the carrying of a cross? Was it just the excitement of seeing the miracles of Jesus? Or was it the flocking of people around him while he taught in a way that no other man had ever taught? You see, no one could ever say that he followed Jesus Christ under false pretenses or that Jesus had tricked them in following him. He said to the guy, I will follow you. Jesus responded from the Living Bible translation. And here's what he said. I'd always remember, I'd always think Jesus looking at him with a smile and saying, you've got to understand what it is that you're asking to do. He said, remember, he's speaking to the individual, he said, remember, I don't even own a place to lay my head. And you want to follow me? He said, foxes have dens to live in, birds have nests, but I, the Messiah, have no earthly home at all. And you want to follow me? He says, as if Jesus is saying to this man, Think about what you are saying. Think about the step that you are about to take. Think about the cost of leaving everything to become my disciple. In reflection, you go back to Matthew chapter 20 or chapter 10, and Jesus talked about taking up your cross. In Luke 14 and 26, Jesus talked about putting family second to their relationship with Jesus Christ. In Matthew 19 and 21, Jesus talked about giving away everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. Did this gentleman understand what it is to be a follower of Jesus? Now, hear this. Jesus is not discouraging the enthusiasm or the excitement of the inquirer. Absolutely not. Jesus simply wants the inquirer to understand that there is a cost to followership and there is a cost to discipleship. Jesus offers himself. There's a song I used to listen to when I was growing up. Charlie Pride, I think, was one of the first people who introduced this song. And it goes like this. Before you take another step, there's something you should know about the years ahead and how they'll be. You'll be living in a world where roses hardly ever grow, because all I have to offer you is me. And the second verse says, there'll be no mansions waiting on the hill with crystal chandelier, and there'll be no fancy clothes for you to wear. Everything I have is standing here in front of you to see, and all I have to offer you 
is me. And to follow Jesus is to accept what he offers. And he offers himself. And through three years of teaching and training, and by the demonstration of his miracles and the awesome teaching that he had spoken throughout the land caused people to come. They were attracted and they were prepared to come the cost. And then another guy steps into the scene and Jesus, actually Jesus took the initiative on the second time. And he spoke to another guy and he said to him, follow me. And then right out of the blue, a third person steps up to the plate and genuinely or otherwise, he says, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. So there are personal things that they need to take care of before they make the decision to follow Jesus Christ. You see, there may be people today listening and suggesting, you know, I, I'd like to follow Christ, but I'm not sure if I'm prepared to pay the cost. Because sometimes when a person contemplates becoming a disciple of Jesus, they think about the stuff that they must renounce and the things they give up and the things that they have to sacrifice. You know, the message of the good news is anything that you give up to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, he will replace it with stuff and things that you never dreamt of. For instance, in John 10 and 10, Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy life in abundance to the full till it overflows. So if you're thinking about following Jesus today, don't meditate on the stuff that you gotta sacrifice, but think about the joy that comes into your heart and into your spirit when you accept the call to follow him. So Jesus said to this gentleman and all three of them, the guy who said, let me go and bury my father. The guy who said, let me go and say goodbye to my family. Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Another translation puts it this way. Anyone who lets himself to be distracted from the work I plan for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. So, question. When does personal issues or plans or dreams or priorities supersede Christ's call to follow him? The call of God is so urgent and our response should be so immediate that Jesus talked about Luke in Luke 14 about the sacrifice. Here's what he said, I quote, anyone who wants to be my follower must love me. Just listen, anyone who wants to be my follower must love me far more than he does his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, or sisters. Yes, more than life itself. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. Ladies and gentlemen, today, I want you to get excited with the prospects of, first of all, knowing Christ personally and intimately, and then enjoying every day of your life the gifts that God through Christ can give to you. You guys have an awesome day, and the Lord bless you. Be real good. God loves you. Amen. Amen.